Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to basically prove a major result in analytic number three. Free, 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 free. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to prove a major result in analytic number theory, namely Euler's reflection formula. I don't know the geometric meaning of this thing, I really don't care, but a lot of you people are probably interested why it's called a reflection formula. It probably does make sense, this terminology, never mind. What are we going to show today? We are going to show that gamma function of z times the gamma function of 1 minus z is going to equal to something. Not going to spoiler at the moment what it is, we are going to work right through it. And we are going to make use of something that we have derived before, something pretty useful. So, how can we actually start? So, we've learned about three definitions of the gamma function. The integral one, I have derived this a long time ago, the Euler definition and the Weierstrass definition. Using the integral definition is going to be absolutely brutal. I have to make a separate video on that because that thing is an absolute piece of shit. It's a really, really hard thing to deal with. Okay, it involves a lot of technicalities. We're not going to deal with this today. I would like to start off with the Euler definition because infinite products are, if they converge, really nice to handle. Okay, really easy to handle. Meaning, let us start off with gamma offset. What's the Euler definition of gamma offset? Well, this is nothing but, okay, this is probably supposed to be a 1 over, it should be a 1 over z times. That's the infinity krill because one person in the comments said that's definitely a krill because it's spreading its legs. Mm, that's absolutely sexy. So that's pure math sex right here. So k being greater or equal to 1. And then we have this term of 1 plus 1 over k to the z power up here over 1 plus z ok. This right here is our gamma function. But what is gamma of 1 minus z? Surely you can just plug 1 minus z into here as the argument, but you are going to have a really tough time. I tried that before and it's horrible. I didn't come to a real conclusion right there. I really couldn't algebraically manipulate this thing then in what I want it to be, but then I got the idea to use the recursive definition of our gamma function. So if you take a look at the gamma function, just as the factorial, so if you have x factorial, that's nothing but, okay, it's recursively defined, so x times x minus 1 factorial. Meaning this thing right here is gamma of x plus 1, and then we are dragging the x to the front, and we are going to get gamma of, okay, this is nothing but gamma of x. Meaning what we do, we are going to reduce the argument by 1 right here. Then we are going to drag this new argument to the front and put this argument into here. Meaning, equivalently, for our gamma of 1 minus z, we are going to get, okay, reducing this by 1 is negative z times gamma of negative z. I'm terribly sorry for this ugly looking uh, hook right here. The Captain Hook, boy! And this thing is going to make your life really easy because if you consider this, this negative z and then one of the negative z is going to cancel out. So we don't even need to write this out. So if you plug this in here, so multiplying this thing by that, you're going to get a factor of negative z and then over negative z. It's going to be a one. So we are going to get rid of this. Also infinite product, infinity krill of one plus one over k to the negative z power over 1 minus z over k. Like I said, infinite products are really easy to handle if they converge, because then we can just take this limit that we have right here, take it to the front, and then we can just collect terms into a new pi notation, meaning if stuff converges nicely, and I guess um, infinite products converge if and only if the infinite sum of the natural log of this argument converges absolutely. And for nice 
um, values of z, it does converge. So if you don't have z being equal to negative one, negative two, zero, it should all work out pretty nicely. Never mind. Without further restrictions, let's collect all the terms. Let's bring the pi notation completely to the front. So taking the limit to the front and then this pi notation to the front, then taking the limit again. So we are going to get this infinity grill. Okay, we have this one over z term. I'm going to put it here. And then we're just going to multiply this argument and this argument together, okay? We have something to the z power times something to the negative z power. It's going to give us something to the z minus z, so something to the zero of power, which is just one. So overall, this up here in the numerator is going to cancel out pretty nicely. Then down here, one plus a, I would say, times one minus a is going to give us one minus a squared. One squared minus a squared. It's just a simple difference of two squares. So this is one minus z squared over k squared. And this is the answer we have at the moment. Is this any good? Yeah, well, it's, it's something, but what is it exactly? We can make this way nicer, actually. So we can turn this into something that is really familiar for us at this point. I want you guys to consider the infinite product of our sine, okay? If we take a look at the sine of z, well, we can just turn this thing into linear factors of all those zeros, okay? So this is going to give us a z because z minus zero, okay, cool. Then we have the integral, this infinite product. And here yeah, it's going to run over all the zeros, basically, the linear combination of all the zeros. So this is going to give us one minus z squared over pi squared k squared. This is what we have at the moment. One cool thing, if we plug a pi into here, okay? If we plug a pi into here, so pi times z as the argument, okay, we are going to get a pi times z right here, but also we are going to get a pi squared times z squared, meaning this and that is going to cancel out. Overall, we are going to have the same thing right here as in our denominator. Also, we kind of have our one over z if we take the reciprocal of this thing. We have the pi notation starting from the same running index. Meaning, if we take the reciprocal of this thing, we just take the reciprocal of this thing, bring the pi notation to the front, take the negative one power, it's the same thing as this thing right here. So, one over sine of pi times z is going to evaluate to one over pi times z times our infinity grill from k greater or equal to one to infinity of Okay, this is going to give us one over one minus z squared over k squared. Okay, this is not just falling from the sky, it's a proof by inspection, you could say. So, so we have derived this thing right here rigorously before and we're going to make use of it. We have derived it such that we can use it. All that's really missing to get to this formula is to get rid of this pi right here. How can we get rid of the pi? Well, multiply both sides by pi because it's not equal to zero, okay? This and that is going to cancel out. Meaning, this expression, which is equal to gamma of z times gamma of one minus z, is nothing but pi over the sine of pi times z. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so <laughs> this is pretty cool. For some odd fucking reason, if you multiply gamma functions together, you are going to end up with pi times the cosecant of pi times z, okay? So you can actually rewrite this as pi times the cosecant of pi times z. And this is going to hold for all values of z except for um, positive and negative integers, okay? So then you would divide by zero, ain't good. So actually this formula only holds if this thing also converges in some way. So this is pretty cool. This has been the first method. And like I said, we also have the Weierstrass definition and we are going to go for this now. This method, in my opinion, is easier than the one before. So that's a standard thing you might want to do. Most people probably don't even start with the Euler definition. They start with this thing right here, actually. At first, we would like to consider the Weierstrass definition of the gamma function once again. So what we are going to take a look at at the moment is the reciprocal of our um, reflection formula. So gamma of z times gamma of 
1 minus z. And don't forget that we can rewrite this as negative z times gamma of negative z. Meaning, Weierstrass definition tells us that this first part 1 over gamma of z is nothing but, okay, let me think. I, <laughs> I don't have stuff like this in my hand. Uh, in my head, I have the formula for the digamma function in my head, and now I have to go back. So we are going to get a factor of z right here, and then e to the Euler Mascheroni constant times z, and then definitely an infinite product over this running index from 1 to infinity here. Okay, yeah, we have 1 plus z over k times e to the negative z over k. Okay, that should be the case. So this is our first part, 1 over gamma of z. Now for the second part, 1 over negative z times gamma of negative z. We are going to get a factor of negative z. Okay, this is this one factor. And then same thing right here. Okay, we are going to get once again um, negative z. Yeah, right, negative z because this is gamma of negative z. And then e to the negative euler mascherone constant times z and then infinity grill. We are going to get 1 minus z over k and then e to the z over k. Okay, I'm terribly sorry, this is going to get a little bit cramped right here. By the same arguments as before, we can collect terms, we can bring the pi notation to the front actually. Also, what I would, oh no, um, okay, you see, this thing right here is actually equal to 1 over gamma of z and then times 1 over negative z and then 1 over gamma of negative z. So um, this first term actually is 1 over negative z. I'm terribly sorry for this. Meaning this and that is going to cancel out to 1. Okay, I was already wondering something seemed wrong here. And now, by the same argument as before, let us collect terms with this pi notation. Also, e to the negative Euler Mascheroni times z, and this thing is going to cancel out to 1, so we are going to get z times the infinity grill. And this thing right here is once again the difference of two squares, leaving us with 1 minus z squared over k squared. Now, if we take the reciprocal on both sides, we are actually going to get under the condition that this is not equal to zero and this is not equal to zero, we are going to get the gamma of z times gamma of 1 minus z is actually nothing but 1 over z times this chunk right here to the negative 1 power, okay, taking the reciprocal and like we have discovered before by doing this little argumentation on our sign, we are going to get pi over sine of pi times z. Okay, the second way is just a little bit complementary. Um, but yeah, now you know of two ways to derive this thing right here. I'm going to make a video on the integral thing. It's pretty hardcore. I'm going to make one assumption in this video because otherwise it would take fucking ages to derive this thing. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend our channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those teachers I created or support the channel on Patreon. Click on those Quora questions I post from time to time. And up until the next video, have a flamble day. See ya.